the beginning of the Second World War, none of the five forces that policed Herefordshire and Worcestershire employed any police women. I am going to suggest that the local watch and standing joint committees who acted as police authorities and chief constables stubbornly refused to employ women and that it was the wartime conditions combined with pressure from various groups within the communities that eventually led the Home Office to intervene and formally order the employment of police women in England and Wales. At the outbreak of the Second World War, police work was seen as a masculine occupation. The only women employed by police forces were cooks and cleaners. In addition to this, forces employed women known as matrons on an ad hoc part-time basis to care for any female prisoners that were in custody. This role would often be carried out by the wife of a policeman. You might have assumed that there would be women employed in clerical roles, but this was not the case. Work of that nature was always carried out by policemen. As you can see from the slide, a handful of forces had employed police women. On the left, we have Stoke-on-Trent who employed two in 1931, Wolverhampton with one in 1937 and Coventry with two in 1938. During 1939, Birmingham had the largest number of women employing 13 in their police women's department, 12 constables and one sergeant. But as you can see from the right column, none of the county forces um, employed any women. And as you will see, it's not as we are today with one force. Uh, within Worcestershire, there were three police forces. During the First World War, concerns about the morality of women and young girls had seen a system of voluntary patrols set up. In April 1915, the Worcester City Watch Committee had received a letter from the Conservative and Unionist Women's Franchise Association requesting women's patrols. With the consent of the Chief Constable and organised by the National Union of Women Workers, a system of voluntary patrols was implemented in the city. In Hereford, similar patrols started in late 1916 to combat what was referred to as the great problems owing to the presence of thousands of munition girls and some hundred soldiers of the Labour Battalion. In January 1919, it was reported that these patrols had saved girls in great moral danger and rescued women and girls from bad companions and drink. None of these patrols had been directly employed by police forces. And with the war over, such patrols ceased. Some police forces, such as the City of Birmingham, Gloucestershire and Metropolitan Police had seen the advantages of employing women, but Herefordshire and Worcestershire returned to the pre-war status quo. Throughout the 1920s and 30s, women's groups campaigned for all forces to employ police women. Groups such as the Women's Institute, the National Council of Women of Great Britain and the Mothers' Union all focused their campaigns on the protection of women and children within the criminal justice system and also the moral welfare of women, rather than the advancement of women within policing. In 1935, the National Council of Women sent a resolution to all police forces, asking them to appoint an adequate number of trained and attested police women, meaning that women should have a power of arrest and that their work would focus on victims of and witnesses to sexual crimes. Like many forces, the City of Worcester Watch Committee noted that the committee was satisfied that such an appointment in Worcester was not at the moment required. And if we look at the reported comments here from the chairman of the Worcestershire Standing Joint Committee, we can perhaps see how women were viewed. As he said, it would be a great mistake to have a lot of women going about gossiping and saying that they were police women. However, it should be noted that Worcester was not alone in such a decision, as in its annual report for 1938, the National Council of Women highlighted that 52 out of 60 county forces and 83 out of 121 borough forces in England and Wales had not employed women. With war looming, chief constables and the Home Office were acutely aware that they would lose policemen when they inevitably volunteered to serve in the armed forces and that the demands upon policing would increase with the additional workload that war would bring. Forces looked to the first police reserve who were retired police officers and who could return to work in a crisis, as well as the police war reserves specifically created in 1938 when war was looking increasingly likely, and also the special constabulary. However, none of these measures included women, and in February 1939, the National Council of Women protested that 
women had been excluded from serving in the special constabulary and cited that the Great War had clearly demonstrated the need for female patrols during wartime. The Home Office responded in the March with the suggestion that women could be recruited as drivers or carry out clerical work, thereby releasing policemen from such duties. In June 1939, the Home Secretary confirmed that women would not require any powers of arrest in order to carry out such work and that they would not be permitted to serve as special constables. The Women's Auxiliary Police Corps was duly created in August 1939 to allow women to act in a support role rather than be out on the streets carrying out operational duties. Herefordshire County recruited its first woman to the Corps on the 1st of May 1940 and by the end of the year a further four women had been recruited. All five women were posted to roles at headquarters as clerks and telephonists. At the end of 1941, an additional two women were posted to Leominster to work as clerks. In May 1942, the Inspector of Constabularies instructed the Chief Constable to proceed with the recruitment of six more women to the Corps in order to release men from motor patrol duties so that they could carry out fundamental police duties. Um, and I think we need to be clear here that motor patrol duties are perhaps not as we would assume them to be here today. As in over the next three months, five more women were recruited, with two of those being employed as chauffeurs for the Chief Constable and his deputy. The City of Hereford Force recruited its first four women to the Corps on the 1st of December 1941, and a total of 17 were recruited throughout the year, although the number serving at any one time would have been lower. This slide shows the women who worked at the headquarters of the Hereford City Force in June 1942. Unfortunately, there are no records for their specific roles. But out of the total number of women that served during the war, at least six were listed as Class A auxiliaries, which made them attested officers with a power of arrest, and they were likely to have been engaged on patrol work. And in 1944, October of that year, a Class A auxiliary was commended by the Watch Committee for her good work in effecting the arrest of an Allied soldier who was wanted for a serious offence. The County of Worcestershire was initially reluctant to the concept of recruiting women, with the Chief Constable and the Standing Joint Committee agreeing in November 1939 that it was not considered that they could be usefully employed. However, by November 1941, the force had recruited some women as the matter of their uniform was discussed at a Standing Joint Committee meeting. And in May 1943, it is recorded that the county force had employed 43 auxiliaries, although again, it is not known what their duties were. Whilst progress was being made with the recruitment and use of female auxiliaries in police forces, the campaign for permanent police women went on. In June 1940, the National Council of Women, along with 20 other women's organisations, established the Women's Police Campaign Committee, which sought to make the appointments of attested female officers compulsory in all forces. This campaign saw local groups write to and lobby chief constables and the respective watch and standing joint committees. At the end of that year, the local county federations of the WI wrote to the Herefordshire City of Worcester and Worcestershire forces requesting the appointment of police women. None of the chief constables or police authorities were moved to take any action. Indeed, in July 1940, the Herefordshire chief constable is recorded as saying, no useful purpose would be served by the appointment of police women, as he failed to see what duties police women could carry out which could not be carried out by a police constable. Other organisations also demanded the appointment of police women who reacted to localised conditions, such as the vast numbers of troops stationed within their localities and the subsequent concerns about the moral welfare of girls and women fraternising with them. In April 1940, the Hereford City Force received requests for the appointment of policewomen from the Hereford Trades Council, the Women's Cooperative Guild and a female magistrate. The Chief Constable argued that if he did so, it would reduce the number of male auxiliaries and incur additional expenditure as women would require special accommodation. The Chief Constable briefly considered the use of voluntary patrols, similar to those used in the First World War, which rejected these too, as you can see his reasons on the slide here, that he didn't like the idea of uh, any patrols having the suggestion that they might be police officers. During the second half of the year, the county force received persistent requests from concerned individuals in the ross on area. 
the Rector of Ross submitted a petition signed by residents and ratepayers drawing attention to the practice of young women frequenting camps and billets of the armed forces. It was requested that the Standing Joint Committee consider the appointment of police women with a view to securing more control over these women. However, this was refused. When the same matter was raised five months later by the Ross and Archenfield Moral Welfare Committee, who complained about the tremendous increase of the population of the small towns and the great influx of soldiers, the Chief Constable remained to find stressing, neither police men nor police women had any authority to prevent young girls and women talking to and walking with soldiers or other men. In March 1941, the WI Federation's Executive Committee tried again, requesting patrols and camps at barracks in Worcester. The Watch Committee declined the request with the Chief Constable, Captain Lloyd Williams, stating that he saw no need for the appointment of women and although Terry did not despise the service of women, if they were to be of any benefit, then he would have to employ a large number which would be a waste of money. He felt that a welfare was the solution that the WI wanted and consequently the request was refused. Although police forces remained resistant to calls from various groups, I would suggest that it was the conditions of 1943 and 1944 that ultimately led the Home Office to intervene. The large numbers of women employed in the services and industry, coupled with the arrival of Allied troops, particularly the Americans, led to new demands for the appointment of police women. Individuals and the state feared the repercussions of women and girls associating with GIs, who were not only seen as a threat to morality, but also to British masculinity with so many men away fighting. In February and March 1943, there were complaints in the city of Worcester about the behaviour of young girls and soldiers, with both the Chamber of Commerce and St John's PCC concerned about misbehaviour in the streets after dark, partly caused by the large number of troops and war workers in the cities, but it was alleged that the main problem was girls aged between 15 and 17. The appointment of police women was requested in order that they could devote special attention to the streets, public houses, railway stations and riverbanks. The Watch Committee convened a special meeting on the 31st of March to discuss the matter. Two representatives from the US forces and woman Sergeant DeVitri of Leicester Constabulary were also present. Delegates from the Chamber of Commerce, Worcestershire Women's Police Campaign Committee and local churches all wanted a trial of police women. However, the Chief Constable argued, the police are not adjudicators of moral conduct the law not being concerned with private morals, but only with the outward conduct of its citizens. It would appear therefore that a policewoman was not likely to have a more deterrent effect than a man. Despite these objections, it was resolved that two auxiliaries should be attested as police war reserve constables, which would allow them to serve as policewomen for the duration of the war. However, the resolution went unactioned as the chief constable reported in September that year that the two women he wanted for the role were now unavailable due to ill health. Whilst it is difficult to disprove this account due to the lack of official records, I would suggest that the Chief Constable was perhaps deliberately delaying the appointment of women. It is possible that there were other potential candidates who could have fulfilled such a role, but the matter was not pursued by the force until the Home Office intervened in 1944. So, why were Chief Constables so reluctant to employ women? Policing was a traditionally masculine occupation and many chief constables were ex-military men, such as Lloyd Williams of Worcestershire. Similarly, many police authority committee members were all male and the standing joint committees of the counties often had members who were ex-military men and of the upper classes. The 1942 police subcommittee of the Worcestershire Standing Joint Committee is one such example. It included Sir Richard Brooke, who was 9th Baronet of Norton Priory, Cheshire, Colonel Fernshaw, and Lieutenant Colonel Millward. It can be argued that these men were likely to share the views of the Chief Constable and were content to endorse those views. Indeed, this is confirmed by Viscount Cobham, Chairman of the Worcestershire Watch Committee, who stated in September 1940 that with regard to employing policewomen, the committee had always left the matter entirely to the discretion of the Chief Constable. Such issues were of a concern to the National Women's Police Campaign Committee. And in 1943, 
Edith Tancred, who was president of the National Council of Women, stated, local control too often means that watch committees and standing joint committees agree to support the personal prejudices of the chief constables who are opposed to women police. Chief constables were also concerned that if they recruited women, then consequently they would have to reduce the number of male officers. As we have heard, many requests for police women were connected to fears about morality, and chief constables view such work as moral salvage rather than a criminal offence, and argued that it was better dealt with by existing charities and welfare workers rather than police women. Although the Home Office had implemented the Auxiliary Corps, it remained ambivalent about the recruitment of women for much of the war. Despite issuing advisory circulars suggesting that they do so, it would not direct forces to employ women, arguing that it preferred to leave such matters to the local decision-making of chief constables and police authorities. However, in March 1944, the Home Office departed from this policy and reacting to concerns about morality, finally instructed forces that they should employ women. The buildup of troops in preparation for D-Day saw anxieties soar about relationships between British women and GIs. The solution to such concerns now lay with the appointments of police women. The Secretary of State ordered that women should be employed or their numbers increased in order to deal with the situation created by the concentration in certain areas of the country of large numbers of the armed forces, whether British or allied. Fully aware that chief constables had previously argued against the employment of women on the grounds that morality was not a police concern, the report stated, the matter is one of increasing importance to the maintenance of good relations between the civil population and allied troops in this country. And on this ground alone, the Secretary of State feels amply justified in regarding it as one with which the police must be prepared to deal. However, any women recruited would also be in addition to the establishment of policemen, policemen sorry, reassuring chief constables that they would not lose men. But forces were threatened that if they did not comply with the Inspectorate of Constab the Inspectorate of Constabularies would implement an establishment of female officers for them. Crucially, all women were to have a power of arrest and were clearly intended to be out on patrol rather than undertaking non-operational duties in police stations. In April 1944, the City of Worcester Watch Committee resolved to seek authority for five auxiliaries to be attested as officers. And the following month, the Standing Joint Committee of the Worcestershire County Force decided to utilise 16 auxiliaries as attested policewomen. At the same meeting, it was authorised that a small number of cars should be purchased in order to convey policewomen around the county so that they could be used to the best advantage. The 16 auxiliaries chosen to perform these duties as police women were given six weeks training at Castle Street Police Station and then sent to Gloucestershire and the City of Birmingham forces for further training. In Herefordshire, women were not employed until the city and county forces merged to form Herefordshire Constabulary in 1947. The new force established a police women's department of 12 women, three of whom had been auxiliaries within the old city force. The City of Worcester followed a year later, appointing two women in 1948. Both forces also retained women in civilian clerical roles, which had not been the case before the war. This talk is aimed to focus on the counties of Herefordshire and Worcestershire, and I hope that I have shown that the Second World War saw some women directly employed by police forces and become involved in the policing of those counties for the first time. Wartime conditions combined with pressure from women's groups and other concerned parties and crucially formal intervention by the Home Office had led to the permanent employment of women. The forces of both counties utilised women in civilian posts for the first time and then established police women's departments. These departments would expand over the next 25 years and would remain in place until the mid 1970s when they were disbanded under the Sex Discrimination Act. However, what happened then is a story for another day. Thank you.